Hi and welcome to episode 5 of Country Bumpkin Creates. My name is Lucy, um, I'm coming to you from a little town called Tavistock um, between Plymouth and Exeter down in the southwest of the country in Devon. Uh, I live just on the outskirts of Dartmoor. It's a pretty gloomy, horrible day here, um, so hopefully the lighting isn't too bad. Um, you can find me on Instagram as country underscore bumps and on Ravelry as country bumps. Apologies for the delay in the last, between the last recording and, and this one. Um, I don't quite know where the time has gone really. Um, yeah, I don't really know what I've been doing. Oh, the, the main event was, ta-da! Miss Banana was born. Uh, so Holly, my niece Holly, had her little baby girl, Albana, on Sunday the 22nd of October at 6pm in the evening. Um, so that involved an impromptu trip to London. So um, I took my mum, my sister was up in London anyway, um, Holly's mum, um, obviously for the birth of Albana. Um, and then uh, just under a week. So she was born on the sun Sunday and then on the Friday um, I took my mum, who was great grandma, uh, up to London for the day. Um, we went on the train. It involves a three and a half hour journey from Plymouth. So it was very early in the morning train trip to London. Uh, we got to spend about six hours um, with Holly and the baby um, and my sister. Um, and then we came home again and it was, oh, she's just adorable. Well, I'll insert a picture here. Um, and the picture I'll insert is one where she's wearing, we went out for a little walk while we were there. Um, and she wore one of the hats that I'd knitted for her. So it was really cute. Uh, so yeah, that was like the momentous news, I suppose, of the last um, three weeks. I think it's been three weeks. It may have been longer. Maybe more like four weeks. I hope you've all got a beverage. Because this could be quite a long one. I love this mug. It says, all you need is yarn with the love crossed out. And I got this from uh, Devon's Sun Yarns quite a while ago. I'm not sure if she's got any more in stock or not. I've got a feeling I did see them a little while ago. On her page. But... Yeah, I think that's all the sort of news really. Other than that, it's just been work and daily life. And apologies for the hair flicking. I'm not used to having my hair down so much. Uh, so we'll go on to what I'm wearing. So today I am wearing the Bendy Arrow Shawl by Charlotte Bory, Bory, B-O-R-Y. don't know how you pronounce that. Um, and the two colours I knit it out of. So this red colour is uh, Slughorn's Dinner Party. And the variegated is... Yule Ball and they are both Harry Potter references um, and they were part of Nora George Yarns Mrs Weasley's Knit Club um, from quite a while ago but they just match so perfectly um, so you start off yeah just start the, yeah start at this end so you've got like this central spine of yarn overs going down so you start off with like a, a garter arrow and then you move to some stripes and then so it's it's like an offset I'll show you a big so it's like an offset triangle really um so then and then you get to the then you do a just a garter of the variegated and then you start decreasing for your arrow bit that comes out so it's one of those shawls that just when you start getting bored on one bit you start another section so there's enough to keep your 
your interest going really but it's just one of those I love sort of squishy garter shawls with a bit of stripage there's a bit of interest it's got really cold in the last couple of days not like arctic temperature cold but cold it's been very mild this autumn um and but all of a sudden in the last couple of days it's really gone chilly we've had quite a few frosts um and stuff over the last few mornings sorry i've got a bit of a tickly throat so i will keep sipping so that's what i'm wearing so what have i been knitting on well i've got quite a few fo's and although i haven't got them all here because a lot of them were baby items that i took with me um when we went up to see banana but the f major fo i suppose is i finished my madewell cardigan i'll insert a picture here of me wearing it it fits so right so lovely um and i did it quite cropped because that's what i wanted really i wanted it it, it it you should knit it sort of down below your hip but a i got a bit bored sorry i got fluff in my mouth now um and i just i, I didn't want it overly long so but I, I love how the length it's come out actually um so so you knit it it's raglan style seamless cardigan um it's the madewell cardigan by hohi locatelli um and the yarn is uh the crookshanks colorway by nora george is it's a bit darker than it's coming out on the screen um so yeah so then you do a rib on the bottom which takes one by one rib just takes forever so i did two and a half inches of rib on the bottom and then you go around and pick up for the i was gonna say button band but there's no buttons on it but you know what i mean um so you pick up all the way around all the way around and again you did this one by one rib and i timed because i'm a bit sad and geeky like that i timed one of the rows um and it was taking me 17 minutes a row so it just felt like this but this band was going to be never ending so and i did three quarter sleeves because i don't like long sleeves even now i've got a t-shirt on that's three quarter sleeves if I have long sleeves I just end up pushing them up and then everything goes a bit saggy and baggy so that's my Madewell cardigan and that's going to be worn I'm going to Nottingham Yarn Expo on Saturday and Sunday with Sophie and Imogen hi girls um, so I'm going to wear that. I'm wearing my flare sweater on the Saturday. And then I'm going to wear this on Sunday. But I'm going to sew something else to wear. Which will come up in a sewing section in a second. Uh, okay, so what else have we got in the FO show? So I finished my Halloween socks. I love these. I think they're just really cool. So these are just... A normal vanilla sock i did them as um afterthought everything I've got cat hair in them as everything does in this house um so and i did do a, like a little it was really basic amateur tutorial on how i did these afterthought everything socks um and i did record it and it is on my youtube channel um should you wish to watch it but it is is a bit not very good 
let's just say that um so this striped yarn is haunted house by twisted limon uh who has an etsy shop uh but if you follow her on instagram then she gives out when she's going to do her shop updates on there she does fantastic self-striping yarn so this was a one two three four five stripe repeat so i did three repeats yeah three repeats per sock so i just knit it in a long tube i started off with a cuff at one end knit it in a long tube finished with a toe at the other end and then i think everything i knit is like 10% cat hair in it um, and then cut it in half picked up the stitches cut it in half and then knit the cuff on one toe on the other and then cut in for the heels and the afterthought the heel that I used on these was the afterthought heel from the smooth operator sock pattern by susan b anderson um but i'll put show notes below and i'll link um everything that i talk about in there if i remember and the next ones are these which were a test knit um, and these are called the behind the bike shed socks and they're going to be part of a collection a, a, like a back to school collection and these are by Julie Walters, who is, is Suffolk Socks on Instagram. So they, they were a 10 stitch pattern repeat. Um, I did a Latvian twist cast on, which I'd never done before. Um, but her instructions were really good on how to do that. A really easy 10 stitch. You'll probably see the stitch pattern better down there so it's like a lace pattern but like I say it was very easy and then a uh, heel flap and gusset but with this little garter um, section on each side of the heel which I thought was really clever um, heel flap and gusset and then a star toe which I've never done before I just normally do a general rounded toe um, and the yarn for, I used for these was Pixies of Ushaw. I think that's how you pronounce it. Pixies of Ushaw um, in the Elf colourway. And these, I'll enter these into the festive sock along that Amy from Stranded Dye Wax is hosting on her podcast group on Ravelry. So I think they're really lovely. But these, they're, they're too small for me. They're not. I've got quite wide feet um, and this was only 60 stitch sock and I normally do 72 for me because of my little fat trotters so these will be uh, going to my sister because she's got the same size feet as me but ours are uh, thinner so she'll uh, she got normal feet I got the fat family fat feet um, so yep yeah. They're pretty cool. Uh, I made a start on Christmas knitting as well. Oh, sorry. And I made my other sister, who really likes green. Oh, that's really blowing out. It's a lot darker than that. Um, this is the Brioche Bandana Cowl. I haven't woven in the ends or anything yet. So it's like a really squishy brioche cowl. Um, but it comes down to a point at the front. I've, I don't know, I've made a bit of a booby with a stitch there, but I'm sure I'll sort that out. So it's like really nice. You can, so it'll come under your coat. So you, you haven't got that gap that, you know, you can get sometimes with your, your coat so it's really squishy and she loves green um and i knit this with 
Cascade 220 Superwash. So she can just chuck it in the washing machine. Um, and the dark green. That's really blowing out. So I use two different types of green. This is called treetops, but it's more like a forest. It, it's really not coming out very well on there. It's more like a forest green. So that's treetops. And this one is green apple. Um, if I turn, if I show you the the other side, oh, that's pretty, that's not bad actually. You can see the darker green better in the better light. So yeah, so that's the beauty of brioche is you can wear it. Sorry, itchy eye. I'm really not a professional podcaster, as you may have gathered by now. So. So you can wear it either way. Yeah, so. Uh, yeah, so I did make some hats for Miss Banana. As I said, I'll insert a picture here. Of them. Um, one is the baby top knot hat. I can't remember what it's by, I'm really sorry. And then the other, the two are, the two variegated ones are, it's called the basic baby hat pattern. And again, I'll link them below. Um, um, I've just sent up, my sister's going back up this weekend. So I've been asked to make some mitts. So I've made two pairs of these. I've made two different sizes so they can try them on banana when they get there. and see which fits and then when I know what fits I'll make some more uh, I do have two ho ho holes so the first ho or half object is the first back cave sock for the hubster so hubster's got size 9 feet so I don't know what went wrong with the toe there I've done the decreases a bit doolally once we're on his feet, that'll be fine. So this is just a plain vanilla sock. Um, this colour is Limoncello. And this, the main colour is Batcave. And they are both from Amy at Stranded Dye Works. And they're her Oasis base, which is a 75-25 merino nylon. Um, and the Limoncello just works really well. Um, with that, so... And the other hoe I've got, sorry, I just need to change socks off the sock blocker. So I've only got, oh, I'll talk about these sock blockers that the hub sock sells on. So these I got made by um, Yarn Street on Etsy because um, the only sock blockers I have are, are for a size up to a size 5 UK. So these are UK 17 and she cuts out whatever, you can get whatever colour, you get various colours. And then I think she did dinosaurs and I can't remember what the other pattern was that cut out. So I think they're really cool. Um, and she does a range of sizes and I believe... She will do up to like a size 11. So if you've got a big feet, man with big feet in your life. Sympathies. Um, but she will do larger ones if you, as like a custom order. So um, that's really cool. And then, so the second ho 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 is a stripy Christmas sock. This yarn is by... London House Yarns and it's the Yule Ball colourway which is a Harry Potter reference um, and this was a sock set so it came so it's a, it was a 50 gram of the main colour the striping and then a 20 gram um, mini con for contrast so that's what I've used for the heel and I've done these 
toe up. So instead of doing an afterthought everything sock, because I only had 50 grams, I split the ball, split the skein of yarn into two 25 gram balls. Um, and thought I'd do something a bit different and do toe up. I, my general sock knitting is cuff down, plain vanilla with a heel flap and gusset. Um, but I did, just did a toe up. I used Judy's Magic Cast On, which I think every knitter has heard of. Um, that took a bit of my, getting my head around. So just a standard toe and then I knit up. Um, I think you knit to like two, two and a half inches shorter than your foot length, which is where this marker is because when I do the next one, I'll, I'll want to know where to stop for the next words, Lucy, words, where I need to start the heel for the next, on the next sock. So um, the heel I did was the German short row heel with mini flap adjustment. So if you can see, so the heel would normally have stopped there, but then I've got this little bit of extra here because I've got quite a high instep and a normal short row heel doesn't, I don't know whether that's my ear or the cat Cat hair, sorry. Um, so it just gives you a bit more heel to go over that instep. Um, and that's a pattern by Mina Phillip, who is the knitting expat on Ravelry. So you just end up with like a little, like when you do a, a heel flap. So it was just like an extra a few extra rows but uh, there's a bit more magic involved in that but I'm not going to give the game away because obviously it's a paid for pattern but you get the short row heel um, in any of Mina's patterns but she does like a vanilla sock recipe where she puts this mini flap adjustment in as well and then just knit up uh, knit up the leg until I had till I'd run out of yarn um, change to my contrast, did a 2x2 two two rib and then the surprisingly stretchy bind off, I think again that's Judy's surprisingly stretchy bind off. So they're really cool, so um, I'll move up, so moving on to works in progress now so I've started the second one um I didn't want to do too much because this is going to be my knitting for the weekend um not that I'm not sure how much knitting I'll get done at the weekend but you never know so I've just done the toe and done one row of the started with the and this is this charm is from secret secret miniatures oh, it's Harry Potter birthday cake top and that came with from Homespun House with her Harry Potter Yarn and Charm Club. So, yeah, so I've got my... I'm not sure how far this will get me. It, it, because I, I do 72 stitch socks, uh, normally a 20 gram mini doesn't isn't enough for heels, cuffs and toes. Um, but I've got other black yarn that I can use for the cuff. That should get me the heel done anyway. So, yeah, that's those. Uh, so that's first whip. Uh, second whip is sorry, my uh, Fitbit's linked to my phone, and but I've got a phone call in, but I'll ring them back later. So second whip is I've just literally done the cuff of. Hubster's back cave, second back cave sock. Um, hoping to have them done by Christmas. Uh, what I need to do is I'll finish that, my Christmas sock, and then I'll crack on and get his second sock finished so that at least he doesn't feel neglected. Uh, okay. 
couple of other whips have we got? So to go with the cowl for my sister is I'm doing a brioche. It's called the brioche slouch hat. Um, but I cast on 80 stitches as the pattern. And although it's quite stretchy, and I don't know whether it's just because I've got it on a 40 centimetre needle, but I tried to put it on my head last night and I couldn't get it on my head. So I might have to, what I might do is take it off the needles and put it on, because these are fixed circular, so I can't even um, do a longer cable. I'll put it on the stitch holder things that I use for when I'm doing sweaters. And see if how well it stretches I think before I carry on anymore if not I'll frog it and um, go up a few s work work out the math and um, go up maybe to like 90 stitches or something I did think 80 stitches was a bit small but it is like a DK worsted um, but I don't generally knit hats, so I'm not overly sure. And again, that's in the same Cascade 220 Superwash yarn that I made the cowl in. So she'll have a matching hat and cowl for Christmas. Uh, I haven't really got a lot on my needles at the moment. I need to have a bit of a cast-on party, I think. But I, what I need to do is think about Christmas that might help so I did I haven't knit shawl for a while and it, I was getting a bit like oh already oh the if you watched the last one I started the Stephen West mystery knit along but I frogged that because as the clues came out it was like mm, not really sure it's for me so I frogged that I think I'm going to ha hang back from doing mystery knit-alongs for a little while. I like the idea of them, but... Uh, so, I went through Ravelry the other day, and my go-to girls for shawls are either Vera Valamaki or Hohe Locatelli. And I came across this one by... Vera and this is the first light shawl I'm really pants that trying to show um so it's really you start off with this little section here so it's like an off it's like a crescent shawl um put the pattern down this may help and then you can see um so I went for a bit of a stash dive. Well, uh, if you're in Nora George's Mrs. Weasley's Club and you haven't had the latest yarn, you may want to skip ahead because this is a bit of a spoiler. Because I used the yarn that came, I've had it a few weeks, so, um, so I went for a bit of a stash dive and I found this. Well, this came in the post the other day. Uh, and this is Lucius Malfoy from Mrs Weasley's Knit Club and this is the first round of first one of round six so you, you, if you, when you sign up it's a three month club so you get three skeins of yarn one each month um, and that's from the delightful Nora George um, and then I was like what have I got to go with it so I bought this ages ago at the Loop of London and it's by Die For Yarn and it's like a petrol blue colour and it's 75 wool, 25% silk. Um, merino superwash and mulberry silk. It's 400 metres per 100 grams. And it's the fading stormy night colourway. So it's like a variegated... It's a bit... So it's still not coming out the right colour. Is it a little bit darker? More tealy blue than... But it just matched perfectly with... Um, so I started this the other day so I've got like this first little crescent section done and then you start on some 
short rows, adding in the stripes. Um, and these are needles are higher, higher sharps, five millimeter. I think it called for a 4.5, but I always knit tight and my shawls come out a bit small. And then I've got these stitch stoppers. Um, I've talked about these in previous episodes, uh, again, from Yarn History. And they're really cool. So, hopefully, next week, we can make a bit of progress on that get a bit further and this I'm storing this in my Mrs Brown's bags who is one half of the grocery girls who have an amazing podcast and I always get massive yarn envy whenever I watch them uh, what else um, I did put a few more rows on my granny stripe blanket because it's getting to that weather isn't it i haven't wanted to do it over the summer because it's been a bit warm so last time i showed it oh, that stitch mark I've gone. so i was here i moved my progress keeper up um so i've put in i think about six rows six or seven rows so i did this blue and rain and these this yarn is predominant uh, so far it's all um, cuddle bums yarn um, and it's from last year's yeah last year's wrap club but I didn't I didn't want to make a wrap with it um, so it's growing it's coming along and I'm, I'm only doing it it's not very wide so it's not like bed for my ends that needs sorting out. Um, it's going to be like a sofa blanket, really. So I haven't done it very wide, but I need to crack on with that. Really? Uh, so that's it. I'm, you know, like I say, the needles are a bit lacking at the moment. I think I got so wrapped up with baby knitting and trying to get my maid well finished um and then i've sort of been in a bit of a funk really as to what to knit i think i need to i did start making a list of christmas knits that i need to do uh i don't knit for everybody um because not everybody's knit worthy um so I think once, if I make a list and then really narrow down what I want to knit for, well, narrow down who I want to knit for and then what I want to knit for them. Um, yeah. Should be alright then. And then just have a big cast on party. I'm sure um, Knit Vent starts today by... Curious Handmade, Helen Stewart of Curious Handmade. Uh, and the first pattern, I haven't checked my Ravelry today, so I don't know if it's arrived yet. The first pattern is a cowl that uses um, Advent calendar yarn. And I have two from last year that I haven't used yet. I've got my Cuddle Bums one, but I may put that in my blanket. And I've got my Nora George one from last year because I just couldn't decide what to do with it um so i may i know the first pattern for knit vent is a i think it's a cowl i can't remember whether she said it was a cowl or not anyway it uses advent yarn so it uses 24 different colors of advent yarn so maybe that will catch my eye and we'll maybe i'll start that Also, uh, Melanie Berg's just brought out two really nice new shawls as well. So maybe they'll go on the list. It's 
who knows? The world, as they say, is our oyster. I really like the new, I think it's the Jody shawl that, that Hohi Locatelli has designed for Jodie of the Knit Girls. She did a Jodie and a Tracy. Wasn't too keen on the Tracy because it was quite big and a lot of like open lace. And I don't really get on with lace very well. So um, I think I'll avoid that one. But I really like the Jodie one. So I downloaded the pattern. And when I did, I realised it was DK. I didn't look before I downloaded. I could do it with fingering weight yarn. I could do it with four ply fingering weight. And it will just come out slightly smaller. But when we're at Nottingham on at the weekend, I may look to see if I can get three skeins of nice DK yarn that work together. And then knit that one for myself. And I would like to get another sweater on the needles. I've got yarn. I showed the yarn last podcast. I bought the Aran weight yarn for the Kaylee sweater. So I may, when we get back from Nottingham, swatch for that. And then get that on the needles. I've just done a real, like, I really don't know what to do with myself. Grip at the moment. When I need, I think I need to narrow down, make a list and then crack on. I think night before last. Yeah, night before last I sat down. And I did like half an hour on this project half an hour on that I, I think I knit on like five different things in the space of like two hours because I just couldn't settle to anything so I need to make a list and then we'll go from there it's been a bit of a crappy week with work and life and not sleeping very well and things like that so anyway we digress uh talking of nottingham this weekend so uniform it's very important when you go to a yarn event so like i say i'm gonna wear my flare sweater on saturday and then my madewell on sunday but we need something to wear on our bottom so I am going to sew myself a skirt, she says. Um, and this is a simplicity pattern and it's 8153 and it's in the dot by Dotty Angel. Um, so I'm going to make this skirt here. And I have da, 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 sheeps. sheep fabric. Um, I made myself when I went to Pomfest in... July, June, July. Um, I made a tunic top to wear out of this fabric. And I'll put bright pink polka dot pockets on the front, as you do. Um, so I'm going to make a skirt out of this. So I thought I'll wear the skirt both days um, and it'll go with, well, I'm not sure, quite sure whether it will go with that, but who cares? So I'll wear a black t-shirt with with cardigan and the skirt. And then oh, this will go nice with my flare sweater. Anyway, grey and pink will go nice together. Um, so yeah, bearing in mind it's now Thursday and I'm supposed to be wearing this Saturday morning. I need to get a scooch on, but I'm sure... It's literally two panels and an elastic waistband. So it's not going to take long at all. Uh, I'm not going to do a pocket on the front. Yeah. I haven't got the pattern. I haven't got the destructions in here. So. Uh, 
when I, I'm sure when I looked before it literally was a front a back sew them together hem it waistband you literally fold over the waistband at the top and just put some elastic in it so it shouldn't take long I'll get it I'll get all the fabric cut out tonight um, and then get sewing tomorrow but the iPad's gonna bin out on me in a minute because it's getting to 40 minutes already so I'll just stop here for a quick wee and then we'll come back for stash enhancement not too much today honest see you in a bow okay and we're back we've only got a little little box of stash this week <laughs> mind you it's going to be nothing compared to what comes home from Nottingham uh, okay so along with my Yule Ball socks from London House Yarns I got these and this is Christmas at Grimmauld Place which again is another Harry Potter a reference um, and again it's a 50 gram self striping and a 20 gram uh, contrasted mini so that and what other Christmas yarn have we got uh, if you watch Amy from Stranded Diewerks you'll see that she was talking about this and this is uh, the Christmas stocking colourway by Giddy Yarns um, and again it's a 50 gram of the main colour and then a 20 gram mini and these are both 75-25 superwash merino with nylon uh, and then I saw this on Instagram the other day and this is from the Yarn Lab UK who is on Etsy so it is the Yarn Lab UK at Etsy.com I think it's dot Etsy.com isn't it? I'm not at Etsy I don't know who uh, and this is the colourway Christmas at the Burrow, which again is a Harry Potter reference. And the Burrow is where the Weasleys live. And this is a hundred gram of seventy-five percent, twenty-five percent superwash merino nylon, and then a twenty gram mini contrast mini. That's like really blowing out. It's not that neon. Uh, at all. Like I said, the light is really pants today. Uh, so it's got, oh, look at that. I can see that bit. Oh, I'm a sucker for some speckle. One day I'll work out where the camera is on this iPad, won't I? So they will be made into socks at some point. Uh, my homespun house Christmas at Hogwarts yarn has arrived so if you're still waiting for yours then look away um, again it's got lots of speckles uh, and this is on her plump merino 80% merino 20% nylon 370 metres which is more than enough for a sock, a pair of socks for me. So it's beautiful, isn't it? And this was a special one off that Molly did. Ooh. It pays to go a bit hunting in your yarn sometimes, doesn't it? You find little bits that you didn't. Normally no. Uh, right, what else do we get? So, Amy of Stranded and the fabulous Kim at Alter Knit University in Brist just on the outskirts of Bristol, um, have joined together, and Amy is doing a yarn base that is 
exclusive to Kim. Um, and it's her sanctuary base. And it is a 80% superwash BFL and 20% bamboo. Oh, it's really soft. Um, and this is the delicate colourway. So it's... Oh, I'm trying to get this tag out of the way, but it won't come out of the way. Oof. 80, 20 superwash BFL bamboo. Uh, fingering weight and it's the delicate colourway and it's 400 metres per 100 grams um, and Kim Kim's shop is really cool Amy did a um, uh, what do they call it trunk show to get all American uh, at Kim's shop um, and our nearest Ikea is in Bristol so my sister and I did a road trip because uh, we wanted some bits at Ikea so we went we stopped off and saw Amy first. Um, and I'll link. It's really not focusing very well now. I think I'll just put the light on and on. I don't know how much of a difference it's going to make. Absolutely none. Uh, so her shop is alternateuniverse.co.uk. And she's on Instagram as at AUShopUK. And Kim only deals generally only deals i'm sure she only deals with like natural fibers but she does like a lot of recycled uh yarns and fibers and stuff as well i do get distracted by a speckle on her so blush so i'm gonna make some socks out of these at this um and see how well it lasts because bamboo is supposed to be like really um, antibacterial and um, so it'd be interesting to see how hard wearing they are with the B and BFL they should be quite hard wearing so whilst I was doing my order from Kim uh, I just I got a ball of West Yorkshire Spinner signature four ply in the I can't remember what colour where this was Kind of weight 06, whatever difference that makes. Um, oh, sweet bubblegum. There you go. Kim's put it on there. So it's just like a bluey colour. So I can use that as contrast for heels, toes and cuffs, etc. Um, so just to make the postage worth it, I'll put a ball of that in as well. And then on a D stash on Facebook... I got this ball of self-striping yarn from, I think it's quite old because these are completely different tags now that hand dyed by Kate. So this is on a D stash and it's called Make Your Own Music and it's 100 grams, 425 metres, superwash merino, 25%, 75% merino, 25% nylon um, and it came with this 50 gram skein. Uh, to use, oh, it's really blowing out. It's really not that kind of uh, wherever, wherever I put it. It's really, it's not neon. It's like a nice dark cerise colour. Um, so those will be made into socks at some point. What I want to do is um, make some socks for my sister, myself, and banana, so we can all have matching socks. I think it'd be really cute. She's going to get to the age of like five and be like, Annie Luce, no more knitting. I think she's going to be fed up with us all like matching. So that's on a D stash. And then finally, uh, while I did the order for the suit for the Cascade 220 to make the cowl and hat for Caroline, my sister, I got this vivacious. DK by Fiber Spates and it is 100% superwash merino 230 meters 115 grams and this is the slate colorway because I want to make the this is going to be a Christmas present for my other sister Sarah um, I want to do the bonbon 
mittens by Hohi Locatelli that were in the birthday issue of Pom Pom Quarterly. Uh, the latest one of that arrived, the winter 2017 one arrived earlier this week. I haven't had, really had a chance to read it properly. Um, so I'm going to have a read of that and I may talk about it on the next podcast. So that's future knitting. Like I say, I really need to make a list of who I'm making what for, but we've talked about that already. Um, what's coming up? Obviously, I've talked about Nottingham Yarn Expo this weekend. Um, if you are going to be there, then we I'm driving up. I'm picking Sophie up at eight o'clock on Saturday morning. It takes it's a good four four and a half hours for us from this end of the country um so i'm going to pick her up at eight and we're hoping we're imogen is coming by train because she's in london so i think her, she said her train gets in at five to one which will be perfect for us um because that'll hope that give us time to stop on the way up then for a a wee and a cup of tea um so we're aiming to get we'll probably be at the event by two i would have thought on saturday and then we'll be there all day sunday so if you do see us i'll be the mad woman in the sheep skirt uh hopefully if it gets made in time uh yeah so if you do stop do see me stop and say hello um, I uh, I may try and vlog it. I've, I'm one of those people that's bought a selfie stick. Um, so I may try and vlog a little bit over the weekend. Um, and then I was talking to the girls because we're staying in a, in a hotel room, the three of us, So uh, on Saturday night. So I was talking to the girls and said that we may do like a little show and tell of what we buy on Saturday. Um, and then when I come home, I'm, we're driving her. I'm driving home Saturday, Sunday evening. So I've booked Monday off work. Depending on how knackered I am, I may on Monday record a just like a, an update, a Nottingham review of Nottingham Yarn Expo, and show you what I bought. It's going to be a lot because. Nora George Yarns is vending, Stranded Dye Works is vending, Easy Knits are there, um, Truly Hooked, I think Down Sheepy Lane is there. There's several that are going to be vending that I've never seen in real life before. So it's going to be a bit like squirrel, 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 squirrel. Um, but there's going to be some serious damage done in the yarn buying department, I would imagine. Um, so that's what my plan is. If I don't, if I'm knackered on Monday, um, I may not record it then and I'll do it Thursday, um, which is my next day off after the weekend. That's, I think... That's going to be the only event that I'll be at in the next few months. Uh, but please, if you do see me, uh, come and say hello. Because I'd like a hug. I like hugging people. It's nice. Um, so yeah, and it's nice to meet other members of your tribe. I feel us knitters and crocheters and, you know, fibre people. We've got our own tribe and one day we will take over the world. I'm convinced of that. If they let knitters run the world, it'd be such a happier place to live, I reckon. Okay, so on that note, I will say bye-bye. Uh, happy knitting and hopefully I'll speak to you next week. Bye. <laughs>